Hello, I'm Amy Betcher and I am with the THCWC, the Two Hills Wellness Coalition, and I'm here with Anthony Giesbricht, a local uh, business owner and father of four children. Yep. So I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> can be painful but also enjoyable yeah that's, that's about how it goes and we're in the community of Harry Hill which I always think is kind of cool that it got its name from the buffalo in the area thus we are standing before this really cool metal sculpture in Harry Hill so I'm just gonna ask Anthony a few questions and he's gonna answer them in Plautich for our low German uh, community at least try yes well my plow teach is limited to uh, Zatirol and Gistel <laughs> and Schnadakata. There you go. Sit down, be still, and Kleenex. Pretty, pretty much. much. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the first question I'm going to ask you, Anthony, is how long have you been in the Two Hills community? Um, so, it's right around eight and a half years. Okay. Um, we've been, it was December of 2012 when we moved from southern Alberta to Two Hills. Okay, awesome. Wir sind nun acht und halb Jahre dicht bei Tuchel zu Gast. Um, wir tragen im Dezember 2012 wir von Süden Alberta nach Tuchel. Thank you. And what drew you to the Two Hills area? It's a good question. Um, but mostly, uh, it was a job. A job. I grew up in Texas and I moved to Southern Alberta for my wife. Uh huh. And. Uh, it was cold and it was only September and being from Texas I thought I was freezing to death. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> what a shock <clears throat> to the system. So someone added, uh, offered me a job uh, in a welding shop and I thought this was perfect. So that's what brought us to Two Hills and we've just never left. Cool. So we talked to Two Hills in Wabet. Um, I was in Texas and I was in Alberta and I was in Alberta and I was in September. I was in the beach and I thought that in September I was going to be free. So somebody gave me a job here in Two Hills, in Breiser. And I thought that that would be a great job because I had my own one. Thank you very much. Alright, the next question is kind of challenging to answer. Uh, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Sure. What does <clears throat> mental health or mental wellness mean to you? That's a good question. Um, I have really been thinking about what, how to answer that. Mm -hmm. um, you sent me the question and, and, and I wondered, like, it, it obviously means something to, to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and I wondered, like, how, how do I answer this? Um, but when, mental health, wellness or mental health, to me, basically... It means the world, your your worldview, kind of. Mm -hmm. If if you're if you're mentally unwell, you will have a poor self-image. You'll have, you'll basically think the world is against you and it, and nothing matters. Right. Um, and that you don't matter. Right. But we do matter. We are. Uh, we have intrinsic value. Like we are, we're creatures that have value, no matter what I think. Mm -hmm. I still have value to God. I still have value to someone. Mm -hmm. Even though, so if my if my mental health is not where it should be, then all of that is out of whack. Right. <clears throat> so it can be on a on a spectrum, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So up each week, Zion, what that meant, that means verstand that right to stay as. We have all our, when we understand that we are right to stay, then all the other things that we are right to stay. Uh, I was a man who knows, bloß we are a man. And when we understand that we are right to stay, when we are not good at all, then it is all about it. Ob das nicht wieder das. Er kann danach wird wie Gott und er kann danach wird wie um, wie somewhem, wie irgendwem. Somebody gleich nach der Kavit. Um, 
and that's what I meant when I when we vertellen van uh, ab dich dat zijn is een beetje schwer, aber aber dat uh, wenn, wir, wenn wir reden van een van een uh, van die Gedanken fanholen oder oder how do you say healthy in German? Hmm. Von, wenn wir reden von einem seine Gedanken ähm, erbüht holen oder motig holen. Well, thank you. I think that's uh, I think that's a very wise answer, and it will be interesting for me to see how people answer differently for mm -hmm. that question. Sure. Okay, so the next one I have for you is how has COVID affected you and your family personally? Um, it depends in which aspect. Mm -hmm. um, us as a family, we still relate as a family like we have for the last, ever since we were a family. Right. Um, but how it has affected us mostly is in our church life. Right. Um, because a lot of it has gotten shut down yeah. more than once. Yeah. Um, and we have tried to make it work. Yeah. We, so we've, and we've found places to, to carry on. Yeah. Whatever we need is we need to we feel that we need to do. Um, it has affected my business somewhat to a negative extent. Last year was a positive, this year is a negative. Right. Um, and so some of those things kinda come into play, other than of course, uh, just dealing with the normal day to day interactions with other people mm -hmm. has also changed as well. Yeah. Um, one thing that has really impacted our family is that my parents cannot come see us yeah. because they live in the States. Um, and that has been really hard. Probably a lot harder for my parents than for us. Yeah. Um, but it's also been hard for us and for our children as well that, yeah. you know, they can't see grandma and grandpa this year. Yeah. So that that's probably the biggest one right there. And children change so quickly. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. Yeah. So what does COVID mean uh, on, on the life here and that? Missions and a quack. Missions do, or that's where we do the tallest that end word, being cannabis is not a quack on, or or earned vote. And uh, so that's one of the things we do on what that half you handle. On the other way, my mom and dad, they live in the States. They can't come. They can't come as a king as I. We can't. They uh, also, can't can die sein, and so durch all that, that is probably the hardest. Um, what, uh, what would trouble? Durch all that. How do you cope when you have when you're struggling with your mental health? When you're struggling with dark periods of time, uh, how do you cope with that? How do you rise up? Mm -hmm. um, so, first off, for me. I'm a born again Christian, so for me, it is to call friends and tell them I need prayer, I need help, talk to me, mm -hmm. come help me out. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, that's number one. But that can also be for someone who isn't necessarily a born again Christian. You you still need friends. Yeah. Um, we are social creatures as human beings. We're just social creatures. Yeah. Um, and we need people to talk to. Yeah. Um, as much as you can. Yeah. Um, find someone to talk to, someone who shares you, who you can share your heart with. Yeah. Um, like-minded people, but yet not like-minded in such a way that if I'm depressed, they're depressed right. because we think the same over the same thing. Right. So someone you can share your burden with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, another thing I find is getting a lot of good sleep. Mm -hmm. um, I have a horrible habit of going to bed late. Yeah. Part of it is because we have children. Part of it is just bad habit. Yeah. Um, and so then having to still get up in the morning and going to work again, it makes, you know, you're, you're tired and then, you know, just making sure you have good sleep right. really helps. So, what do I do when I'm going to work? What do I do when I'm going to work? I see my friend. 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 That's number one. Aber eben für so einen Menschen, der nicht Christus kann, der hat, äh, die Freunde haben, das ist grüllig wichtig, grüllig wichtig. Ähm, wenn die vielen Freunde, uns fehlt alle Freunde, wir als Menschen, wir sind, sondern uns fehlt auch bloß an anderen Menschen. Ähm, 
En zo so dat is dat veel dat je kost is somebody gewoon en met iedereen reden en en zijn wat die dat jeet en die een hart iets hebben en dan wordt en dan wordt het jeet er wordt het jeet en fijn sloepen ik ga zijn als je dit ver dat ik leeg nooit sloepen te doen en ik doe ver aan part van dat is weer een kenya part van dat is blessing als je zitten so je nu sloept hier dat 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 is absoluut wichtig dat helpt veel meer als wat ik ver aan is wat we ver aan geloven doen all right, but well, it's starting to rain on us. I have one more question that you're not prepared for. Okay. If you could have only one food to eat for the rest of your life, <laughs> what would it be? Probably hamburgers or hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good answer. Or shrimp, but one of those or three. Or shrimp, interesting. Yes, those three is by far my favorite. My wife just asked me today, we were in Edmonton, and uh, she says, can we just please not have hamburgers again? <laughs> so we had shrimp instead. <laughs> <They> had shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, funny, where do you go Perfect. for shrimp? Um, so today was Popeyes. Oh, it's yeah, fast food right. shrimp, but it's it's all right. But it's still shrimp. Yep. Okay. That's right. Awesome. So I just want to thank you so much for your taking your time. Absolutely. Uh, Anthony is in his volunteer firefighter attire because he is a firefighter with the Harry Hill Detachment, mm -hmm. which we're very grateful for. And I know we've had a busy... It's been very busy. Yeah. <laughs> so the rain is welcome. So it bring is. it on. Definitely is. All Absolutely. right. Thank you.